We have a second place finish with the most ignorant Yu-Gi-Oh deck you could ever actually hope to play. Make sure you guys smash the little grab button on that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. And check out our friends trainingcarmid.com down below. Enter Uncle 40 and uh, save in your purchase. So I got a second place finish with this. Um, we actually we actually ended up losing the Tenpai Mirror at the case tournament over the weekend. So And uh, we actually ended up losing to our friend playing Melodia. So I overall mean second place in one tournament. And then um, losing to a matchup I really wasn't too prepared for. I'm still really learning to play this deck. Um, but I will tell you this is the dumbest Yu-Gi-Oh you can ever actually play right now. The Mirror Match is the biggest game of chicken you could ever actually play. And if you just want to have fun with other Tenpai Dragon players and just being like, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get that that's literally, that's the matchup in a nutshell. Um, I also want to get, we're playing the list that was from Dead Draw's channel, or so before somebody's going to be like, oh, I do want to talk about some changes I do want to make, though, to this, having played this. So, uh, this card is absolutely ignorant as crap. Um, this, uh, you, you know, if you don't have the field spell up, uh, you know, eh, basically your opponent's going to be like, okay, we can do whatever, and just, they'll ash it. It usually gets ashed. Or they try to hold it for the second time, and I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we have triple copies of this card. This card is absolutely bonkers, bat crap crazy. I love this. This thing resolving at the start of damage step is freaking hilarious to me. I also, uh, I love when the, your opponent has to Valor this before you exit the main phase if you don't have the field spell up. And you're like, ah, I see you. And then we play two copies of Fadra. I'm not going to lie to you. I really want to play three of this. This card is awful, though. Like, in <laughs> there will be so many times where you'll just have Fadra and you'll be like, oh, Okay, this is really cool. And you're like, oh yeah, now I remember why I only play two of this. Because this card does nothing to facilitate any of your gameplay. It's literally like, on the back end of things, you, you bring it out off of this. After you got this up and running, you make this so this extends out for the extra OTK line. And that's literally... And make sure your stuff doesn't really, you know, go boom. So, yay. Ten pi numbers. This deck is so stupidly easy to play. Like, I recommend this. I honestly do. So we're playing uh, triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Why, why are you not playing this card if you're trying to play Tempo Dragon? I, I ask you that. Uh, now, somebody's going to question my rarities here. Um, I couldn't find... A lot of these rarities are going to be so bad. I couldn't find my other ulti Veiler, so we played 2-1. Uh, I was also in a hurry, and I gave up trying to find this. This deck looks so janky. Uh, and then we played three Ogres. I'm also not going to lie to you. This card is actually really freaking good right now. Like, Ogre actually saved my butt a lot in the matchups, especially being able to pop a field spell that's a little bit more problematic. Um, being able to um, clean up barrier as well. I will tell you, dealing with the stupid voiceless voice stuff is an issue. So this card's entire life purpose is to clean that up. I don't, I don't really have a, all those hand traps are good. Um, I'm a little bit indifferent about Nib. Nib's good when he comes up, I mean, but most of the time he gets sided out for, you know, another card. But I guess that's just kind of how the format is right now. You make your decision on your hand trap pool on how you need to side, and you make that decision and adjust kind of kind of easily. It's not like you don't have a lot of options and ratios to make those calls. Um, this card is the nuts. Holy crap. I cannot tell you how broken Sengen Kaiman is. This card, I'm disappointed it's not a hollow, but, um, this card probably needs to get destroyed. I will tell you, though, most of the time your opponent's holding the ash for this. Um, they are going to try to hold as far into the combo as they can to stop the Sengen Kaiman from blowing them out. Trust me, it's good. Uh, this card is MVP. Um, this card, uh, this card's been ogred six times. I've uh, I resolved Trident Dragon twice in the course of me playing two tournaments um, for with this. All right, uh, one was to plow through with a pot of prosperity. Uh, the other time was I needed a boost on it to clear a field, and uh, we did it. Um, this is just usually. It's just baits a hand trap. It's, it's all, the, all this card does, personally, for me, is make sure that my board is unaffected, which is good, and then it needs a hand trap. Uh, why would you not be playing this? Uh, I am playing, uh, still playing the set rotation with the Necro Valley. I 
find Necker Valley to be a very strong card when you need to see it. I think the value that this card actually brings to table, I know that some builds are playing Seeker Village, and I've given consideration to the village. I think the card can be good when it needs to be, but for now, I don't know. I, I think we're still going to continue to test this. Oh, we have more ignorant Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh, don't think that we're, we're done here. Uh, this card is stupid. Uh, you only need one Tempai Dragon to win. <laughs> you can throw the rest off. I uh, also use this to stop Zillanthus. It's pretty good. Uh, more odd rarities. I only own one Starlight. I got rid of two a long time ago. Sad day. Um, but this uh, kind of, I mean, you, you have to play it. I'm indifferent about it. The card's good, though. Uh, this filters for other cards. This card's pretty cool. Um, also, you can win through it. And then we have uh, Imperms. Nothing else really too much to say about that. I mean, like, that's that's the build. Woo! Uh, extra deck here. So, this is the most basic garbage in the world. Uh, we play two copies of uh, this guy. You're not trying to bulk down on three of this. Two get you absolutely where you need to be. Uh, we do play one copy of this. You know I don't make this card as much. Uh, it's one of those things that it's like once you start the OTK and you're able to plow through the board, you're you're kind of good. Uh, Alright, discussion time. So I've made this card twice in two tournaments. I have played uh, a good solid eight, nine, ten rounds between two tournaments with this. Um, it's come up twice. And twice in not matches in games. I do think you need this card. For the times that you do need to steal the game with it. And it's unfortunate the price tag uh, warrants that. I have not made this card yet. I do think this card is very solid for rotating into the Necker Valley. It's all about the secondary value that you get with your additional field spell for this to assist you. I've done this three times. This card's nuts. Holy crap. Having this not be affected with your field spell up and running is so stupid. Um, I don't have an opinion on this. Um, this hasn't come up yet. Um, I do want to test out the Progenitor Time Lord. It's definitely on my list of things to consider. Uh, but most of the time I'm getting deburied, so. Alternative things to do. So we do play the one copy of this, um, to make this. That is the entire purpose of this. This facilitates into this. Don't you love combo? Uh, we do play one Heretic Heavenly Spheres. Uh, this card, if you go first. <laughs> Uh, we play one Hita and one Dahark. Uh, your entire life purpose is to uh, combo up Reverse Engineer um, in case you get deburred. Hey, look, fire cards. Hey, look, more fire cards. Hey, look, uh, some gimmicky OTK line that I have not made yet. Uh, I got deburred, and then they had the Ogre for the Hita. I was like, well, you know, <laughs> better than me. It uh, it do be like that. Uh, it do be like that. Um, this card is interesting. Um, not having access to your graveyard kind of sucks. But you can set up some pretty big boards um, and still be fine, I have found. Um, I have given consideration to maining this, but for all intents and purposes, as of right now, um, it hasn't... I don't know. I, I don't think I need it at the moment. Uh, this card has been also pretty okay. Um, I don't know. Droll, Droll's been kind of a miss for me this format. I don't have an issue with it. I don't think there's anything bad with it. It's just been a little bit all over the place. I love this card. This card. Uh, hitting the most random matchups that you can is hilarious. Um, I'm probably cutting this for probably D-Barrier. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I like the theory behind it and the things that it's supposed to do for the matchups. But I feel like... There's just better things available out there. Um, and also having something like Barrier, I think, would be a little bit better for the mirror match. Um, it's up for it's up for discussion. And then we had Triple Cosmic Cyclone being the last card. This card is nuts. This, this card was so good. So, <sighs> that is everything that I have done so far with testing Tenpai. If you want the stupidest Yu-Gi-Oh deck that you could play that takes absolutely no skill, turn your brain off fun, yeah, give this a shot. <laughs> Honestly, there's a reason why <laughs> this card is just so expensive. It's just gas, gas, gas. Let's check our friends at down below under MK40 and send your purchase piece.
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.